Welcome one, welcome all to the UIC Invitational at the Flames Athletic Center in Chicago, Illinois on ESPN. This is yours truly, Dr. Pete Ferreira, bringing you the broadcast today as the Bruins come into town from Belmont University taking on your Flames of UIC. Belmont comes into today two and one overall after having their first contest of the season canceled. They beat Alcorn State and North Alabama before falling to Indiana State just six days ago. Three to one. Your home Flames come into the season two and four overall. It is their home debut. Their last outing is they swept the Bobcats of Ohio University three to nothing at the Red and White Invitational. So both teams coming into separate situations here. Three games for each team this weekend. Also rotating between matches between Chicago State University and that of Eastern Michigan University. Flames will be going left to right with Belmont going right to left. Both teams similar color situations. The home Flames will be wearing the long sleeve whites with visiting Belmont. The Bruins wearing the long sleeve blues. This game brought to you on behalf of the Horizon League. For more information on UIC, UICflames.com, Facebook, UIC Volleyball, Twitter at UIC underscore volleyball, Instagram at UIC underscore volleyball. Visiting Bruins now going through some of their starting lineups. At Libero is going to be Rachel McBride, the sophomore out of Decatur, Illinois, from Belmont High School Club, Empowered Volleyball Club. Joining her is going to be Allie Peterson, the outside hitting defensive specialist, 5'10 five, sophomore out of Kenyon, Minnesota. Also will be number 10, Carly Mason, the setting six foot tall senior out of Forsyth, Illinois. Kaylee Bass, the middle hitting 6'1 junior, the powerhouse from Matea Valley High School, played for Spry. Joining as well will be Taylor Ford, outside hitting right side 6'1 senior out of Ballard High School in Louisville, Kentucky. Number 16, Sydney Willis, middle blocking 6'2 sophomore out of Donaldson Christian Academy. And in rounding things out, for visiting Bruins of Belmont University is going to be Laura Shoopman, the outside hitting 6'2 junior from Oral Roberts, played for the Milwaukee Sting Volleyball Club. Now for the home Flames, coached. Out of his fifth season, Justin Ingram, the head coach. Starting at Libero, Jacqueline Oblena, the 5'4", defensive specialist out of Sandberg High School in Orland Park, Illinois. Joining her will be Michaela Henderson, the 5'8", outside hitting sophomore from St. Michael Albertville High School in St. Michael, Minnesota. Number seven for your home opener is the powerhouse, the outside hitting 5'9", sophomore from Argentina, Martina DeLucci. Joining her is going to be Paola Santiago from San Juan, Puerto Rico, the outside hitting senior, one of the team, leavers, uh, team leaders, as well as Zahira Woodard, 6'1", middle blocking sophomore out of Oak Park River Forest, OPRF. Joining them today for the Flames is going to be number 16, Becca Oldendorf, the 6'2", middle blocking sophomore out of Lockport Township in Lockport, Illinois, as well as number 24, the setter, 5'8", Graduate student, transfer from Auburn, St. Charles East Zone, Morgan Cull. The waves are happening, the huddles are together. It is the home opener on ESPN for the UIC Invitational here in Chicago, Illinois. UIC founded in 1896, 33,000 in enrollment. A lot of fans and spectators here in the crowd today. Safety measures and precautions being taken into consideration, both players Coaches, staff, R1, R2 in their blues today will be wearing masks as we are as well in the broadcast booth. High fives all around. UIC preseason second ranked team after being the runners up in the Horizon League last year. A unprecedented past 2020 slash 2021 season. The volleyball team having to play in the spring of course. An outstanding year last year. Bit of a rocky start to begin things, but coming off a big 3-0 victory, as we said, against the Bobcats out of Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. Visiting Bruins coming in 2-1, as we said, 
and we're underway here at the Flames Athletic Center. Back set, swing, quick tip, drops down. UIC gets their first home point. Beautiful back set as Morgan calls now back to serve with a 1-0 lead for the home Flames. The lefty drops one, knuckleball, out of bounds. No Bruin can get to it, 2-0 already. The bench is on their feet, excited for this one. Coach Ingram again, an outstanding campaign in his fourth year, hoping to bring some of the success here to the fifth year for the home Flames of Chicago, Illinois. White jerseys with the blue color around the wrist. A play in the back set. Off the top, good return. Set near side, Flames. Net violation. Called against Henderson. 2-1 Bruins back to serve. Shootman, the outside hitting junior. Milwaukee Sting Volleyball Club, a notorious top-notch club in the U.S. at the high school level. Top serve back. That was a return by DeLucci. Side bump to keep the rally alive. Back set, hitting it right into the net with Shootman. 3-1 Flames. Again, we will be here today on ESPN for the noon broadcast. Flames will be back in action this evening at 7 o'clock and then back tomorrow as well for 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Dropped over the top, play at the net. Quick one set, down, kill! It's good to be bad. The Bruins get a massive point and get the serve back, 3-2. McBride, Libro to Libro, Blaina. Good return by McBride. Play at the net, double block, able to drop down behind the back line. What placement by Peterson out of Kenyon Wanamigo High School, Northern Knights Club. We're all tied at three. Head coach Caitlin Harrison out of USC 2008. That one goes a bit far. Service error point flames. Ablaina subs out. More strength at the front. Oldendorf with the serve. Near side, misplay went off the side of the hand of Allie Peterson. Some up and down early action for Allie Peterson. 5-3 for the home flames, back to serve yet again is Oldendorf. The middle blocking sophomore out of Lockport. Very young flames team. One senior, one grad student, the rest underclassmen. The Bruins able to get another tip point, 5-4, and the serve back to serve one of their serve specialists, Allie Peterson. As we see the replay, missed time on the double block right over to the top. McBride to serve. Good stab at it by Santiago. Pushing too far, not tipped. Good eye by Schutman in the back row, slowed down a bit. Let it go out of bounds. That's good eye placement there by the visiting Bruins. Tied at five. Back tip over, able to get a palm underneath it. Good play by the Flames to keep it alive. Set far side, no decoy, high off the double. Good dig by McBride. Near side, breakthrough. Back set, slide block, still alive. Good rally here by both squads. 10 foot line, Shootman sends it just a bit far. Flames were on their heels for much of that rally. Substitution coming into the game is gonna be Sahila Wafik from Cairo, Egypt. Two players for the Flames as we see the attempt going a bit far. Line judge. R1, R2, all wearing blue today. Great crew here today on the ESPN broadcast. Tim Hurley leading the charge behind the scenes. 
Far side, 10 foot, bit too far again. Bruins, that's two in a row, not snapping the wrist. Enough to get it between that back line. Six, seven, five now for the home flames. To serve again is Wafik. Back set, tip over the double. Blaina, right, right place, right time, it seems, all game so far. Tip off the block. Flames with another point. Also checking into the game, the six foot 10, no that is not a typo, the six foot 10 right side freshman also out of Cairo, Egypt, Sama Abulhadi, into the game as well. You can't teach height. Ablaney with a big dig, back. Alahani tipped over, right palm. Far side, double block, down! Roof! The Bruins may need a timeout soon as we see the perfect timing of the double block hit two feet past the net. Nine, five, Flames lead to serve again is Wafik. Bump over, down! Kill DeLucci! Is it the shoes? 10-5, Flames. The rally continues. We'll see how much longer the Bruins go without calling a timeout. I feel if they do not get a point here, they must have to. Serve again. Dig one over the top. Flames right place again. Far side, down! That one goes a bit too far, so point goes to Bruins. Much needed point, making it 10-6 now. As we see on the replay, or different camera angle, excuse me. 10-6, still your score. Hop serve, Ablena. Good pass up top, boom, right down. Still alive, Bruins. Oh, and they're calling the double hit. Double touch there for the Bruins. That was a quick one, but R1, the final call. Back to serve the powerhouse, Martina DeLucci out of Sav Caritano. That one's a bit far. Can they get there in time? McBride able to keep the rally alive. Three players, miscommunication there. Shootman came up from the back. This may be the timeout. Not yet, 12-6. Flames have doubled it up. Back to serve, again, DeLucci. 5-9, plays taller. Near side, high over the double block. You gotta hit it really high to get over six foot 10. Roll back, still alive, Santiago. Near side, down. Back set, DeLucci. Santiago. 10 foot line coming up for the kill. Stellar. That one goes a bit too far, I was gonna say, stellar defense right now by the Flames. Only giving the Bruins a chance for the tip or trying to drop it right behind that back line. 12-7, Belmont gets it back. Double block, that one falls back in. Now they're able to get there in time is Woodard. Good block by the Bruins. That serve was Bass with the red shoes, using the accent color for the footwear. Ablena. Far side, down, kill. Paola Santiago. You can't stop her, you can only hope to contain outside hitting. 13-8. As we see the block was spread too far apart, she still found the near side. McBride having to slide. Can they get it all the way over? Not able to. As Schutman falls into some chairs, hopefully she's okay, she's all smiles. 14-8. Little Chelsea dagger. 
Jackie Yao enjoying herself from Loyola Academy on the bench. Ablena. Oh, big kill over the middle. Oldendorf out of Lockport. There's that timeout. We'll take it with him. 15 8. Flames lead here. The UIC Invitational on ESPN. It's always out there. The horizon. A reminder that our greatest goals are rarely attained. And as soon as you reach one, another emerges. But every day we rise and work harder, dig deeper, ask one more question, take one more shot in relentless pursuit of our horizon. While our UIC campus is quiet, the important work continues. Teaching and learning, caring for patients, discovering treatments and cures, innovation, persevering with determination and grit. The world is changing. The importance of your degree won't. We are the University of Illinois at Chicago for Chicago. Thank you to our students, faculty, staff, doctors, nurses, and all our service providers. Welcome back to Chicago, Illinois. Hot outside for a late summer day in Chicago and the Flames are heating things up inside with an early 15 to eight lead against the visiting Bruins out of Belmont. Both teams coming in with two wins, trying to extend it to three. We have a short break in the action. A shoe has come untied. Safety first, of course. Adelhadi able to get the shoe tied. We're clear to continue. That one drops in. You can't come out of a timeout with miscommunication. That's what happened again in the back row. Schupin and Floyd both looking at each other. Somebody's got to go for it. Ablena. Sit over the middle, 10 foot. Almost a lift, nothing called there. Double block, good dig. Can they keep it alive? Able to do so, McBride. What a play by Belmont. Still, nothing you can do when you're all spread apart and Oldendorf takes the action. A blame to the serve. High return, no double. Double block down. <laughs> Looks like there's a scoreboard malfunction here at the Flames Athletic Center. Again, if you want to follow Belmont Volleyball Program at Belmont VB on Twitter, along with Belmont V-Ball on Instagram. High into the rafters, hits the basketball net, not able to be returned. Scoreboard is back to where it needs to be, 19-8. The home flames running away with set number one. Ten foot line, Ablena drops it at the net. Are they gonna call net? They are. They are gonna call net. Belmont seeing the free ball a bit aggressive. Runs into the net in their attempt to keep things going. Check into the game now. Liza Garrido, the 6'2 middle blocking right side freshman out of Argentina. A lot of international players for the UIC Flames. Tips off the top of the net, set, near side. Oh, double block. Sweet mercy, Sama. When you stand six foot ten and the reach adds another few feet, again, that will drop right down like hitting a brick wall. 
Back set, high return again as we talked about. The attack for the Bruins is having to really keep it high today. One hand punch up, Santiago. Miscommunication, not able to get there late. McBride, 22 to eight. Will they use their second timeout? And they will take their second timeout. The Home Flames lead 22 to eight. As we see it drop down on the replay, just a pure one-on-one -on -one joust over the middle. Not able to be there in time were the teammates for the Bruins. Again, the Bruins coming into the day two and one overall. But we have a moment we want to remind everybody the Horizon League is comprised of 12 public and private institutions located in some of the largest cities in the country, including 10 schools in top 70 media markets. To learn more, visit Horizon League Dot com. As we sit here and think about what might be the discussion for the Bruins, is they were going blow for blow in the early onset of this set, but once both teams hit about seven points, the tide really changed. And so we knew they were uh, going to use their first time out. The second one at this point, just to try to get some composure, might not be able to have a comeback in this one but try to get a little bit of a rally to get a little bit of momentum going into that second set. Flames fans going at it. I tell you, dance award, Jackie Yao. The Pride of Loyola Academy is getting her bench going. Also enjoying herself is Kayana Jones out of Normal, Illinois, Normal West High School. Oh boy. Volleyball is fun, my friends. Ablena, serve. Up 22-8. That one breaks through the double block. It didn't close enough. They were able to find a gap right in the middle. Good play by the Bruins, much needed. As we see that block didn't close, hit a right hand, dropped down 22-9. Quick one set. One kill, there shall only be one. Liza Garrido, the 6-2 middle block. Textbook kill for the Flames, 23 to nine. Call with the serve, retreating, good play. Double block, side spin. Through the double block, and that one does fall down. So that's what we were talking about. Two out of three last points the Bruins got. You want to get that momentum, and as we see, able to find that gap on the replay. If they're going to have success against this tall and intimidating front line of the Flames, they got to be able to drop it in right behind that back line. Ablena with the good save. Set near antenna, solo block, good play again by McBride. Back set off the double. Mason back, Ablana not able to get there. One of her first misfires of the day. Solid play by Belmont, 23 to 11. Again, here's that three to one point differential we're talking about since the second timeout. This is what they were hoping to get after the first timeout, but again, let's see if they can carry that momentum in the second set after a service error by Schutman. Schutman out of Salem, Wisconsin. Again, when you got an intimidating front line, can't afford gimme points. 24-11 set one point to serve one of the serve specialists, Amelia Sunga. St. Lucie's Priory. Triple block, and they broke through. Bam, Bruins, good play by Taylor Ford. They were ready for it and just were a bit late. Ford whipped it quicker. And that's gonna be it for this one. Again, textbook set up for Garrido. 25, 12, Flames take set one. Will Belmont be able to even it up? Or will the Flames make it 2-0? We'll find out after this, the UIC Inventational.
Flames Athletic Center on ESPN. Welcome back to the Flames Athletic Center, Bruins Flames and the UIC Invitational home opener for the UIC Flames here on ESPN. Pete Ferrari on the call. Thank you for joining us here on this Friday afternoon after a three-day Labor Day weekend. As we see, Belmont came out strong. UIC was able to make the adjustment, though, again, that intimidating front line for UIC Made Belmont really have to play long. It doesn't seem to be one of their strengths thus far in set number one. They were able to make some adjustments after the second timeout, so let's see if that's able to carry over into the second match. We look at some of the numbers for the first set. Belmont 12 to 25, they lost. Kills eight to nine, almost even. One of the glaring things though is the attack errors. Belmont nine, UIC with four. Total attacks 34 for Belmont. Hitting percentage 172 for UIC, seven assists to eight, four service aces for UIC. So if you combine the service aces with the attack errors, that's an absolute swing of this game. Some numbers through set one, Oldendorf three, Delucci three, and Santiago two for kill leaders for the home flames. And right away, Belmont comes out with a good point. As we said, we saw a little bit of the momentum at the end of set number one. Glad to see them bringing in the set number two. Schubin, one of the serve specialists for Belmont. A lot of it rides in her hands. Ablena, really the quarterback right there. Miscommunication though between Henderson and Delucci. Shooting to serve. One kill, that one goes out of bounds. Bit high on the one attack by the Flames. Quick three, nothing lead. As we see, they tried to do a one. The timing was there, just got a snap wrist a bit more. Three nothing Bruins, exactly what they wanted to start set two. Far side tip over the double. Oh, perfect placement by Henderson. Henderson saw the double quickly approaching. She knew the set was a bit high. I'm just gonna tip it right over, get that point. Secondary row, not able to get there in time. UIC gets her first point of the second set. 
Santiago serves into the net. So again, the errors that haunted Belmont in set number one, affecting the Flames in set number two. Checking into the game for Belmont is Bass Middle Hing Jr. out of Aurora, Illinois, in Matea Valley Zone. Back set, decoy, down, kill! Do you know how to bobble? 4-2 Flames. That offensive attack right now really throwing Belmont for a loop. Double block, not able to close on the near side antenna. Up lane to the serve. Good set up, triple block. Good point by Belmont. Seems when the Flames have tried that triple block attempt over the middle, that's your cover zero in football, all or nothing. Not enough support in the back. 5-2 Belmont. Peterson to serve. Off the double, good stab at it by Mason. Snap, down, not able to get it there. Smart play by Henderson, bit of a free ball within the 10 foot line near antenna. Able to just realize Bruins weren't set. Substitution for both teams coming into the game for the Brains is Abelhadi. Five three here, Chicago, Illinois. UIC Invitational. Another service error for UIC. Again, as we talked about, the errors haunted Belmont in set one, affecting the Flames here in set two, down by a half, 6 3. Sir Floyd. Santiago with the return. Point goes Flames. Free ball at the net. To serve now, DeLucci. Top serve. Decoy, oh, what a good play. Oh, Belmont set him up. Block was going to her right. Pulled it a bit left, plenty of space behind that back line. Like we were talking about throughout set one and the onset of set two, Belmont's got to befriend that back line for success and they're doing it here. That one goes a bit too far, big kill. Abdelhadi. What's nice is regardless of the set height, she can make that adjustment even if it's flat-footed, can still do some damage to serve Woodard. Set from the knee, oh boy, Belmont, bang! 8-5 for the Bruins. What a concise play by Izzy Shower, the sophomore, for the Milwaukee Sting, dropping to her knees to get a good set angle. Outstanding play. Another one kill by Garrido. Time and time again, when that one is effective for UIC, there's not much you could do against it. Now in the grad student transfer from Auburn, Morgan Cull, 5'8". Grad student of St. Charles. Western suburb here of the great city of Chicago. And that one drops inbounds, double block, point, UIC. UIC now climbing back into this second set. As we see timing spot on, we want to remind everybody as well, we'll be back on the air, UIC, Eastern Illinois, seven o'clock tonight, tomorrow, Chicago State at three. Tip over the double block between DeLucci and Santiago. The presence at the net to be able to find that gap and see where that pressure is coming or not going. Exceptional here. They've tied it up at eight to serve. Serve specialist call. Hop serve. Lefty. 
rotates a bit differently off the left hand. Double block, not able to get there. Call, 10 foot line, down, kill, boom, DeLucci. 9-8, Flames have the lead. We'll see how far, again, we go in the second set before the first timeout is called. As Caitlin Harrison knows, they had an early lead. And it's not poor play on either side, just the ball's dropping right now for UIC, but they're called there against the Flames. Belmont back, tied up at nine. Serve specialist, Shootman, a lot of power. Harrison and Co. give the direction. Try to go back row, high set, decoy, far side, down. Good return, joust, net, poke net, it is Henderson. A lot of net play, Oblena trying to set things up. Far side, down, McBride alive. Back set, tip, far, Shootman in the right spot. Down, double, that one's gonna go out of bounds. Beautiful rally, Bruins come out on top of this one. Bruins playing a lot more composed here in this second set. Shootman to serve again, 10-9, Bruins lead. Henderson, Shootman not able to get there. Good placement again by the Flames. If the outstretch arms of 6'2", Junior Shootman can't get there. It's hard when it goes over that top line. Middle was far side. Shootman left on an island, not able to get there. Hop served by the serve specialist, Sunga. Off the double block, down, kill. Break on through to the other side, Bruins. Add another point, 11-10. The block was there. Got to close those hands. Bruins took advantage. One point lead here in the second. Absolutely a different game in this second set for the Bruins. Service error, one of their first of this second set. A blame to the serve in the all red. Long sleeve libero. Stars along the forearm. Set near side. Hit the net, didn't hit the block. Still alive, Ablaine, a back set. Over the double, that one. Oh, they're calling the tip. Point goes Flames. That was a close play. Harrison not arguing. Ablaine, set serve, back row. Shootman, they've been aiming at her all day. Triple block again, a Blaine in the right spot. Back set, double block, big return McBride. Not able to make the adjustment. Front line for the Bruins, 13-11. UIC now with a two point lead. Possibly with one more point, Harrison may need to take that first time out. Calm, cool and composed have been this UIC flame team in the second set after an early deficit. That one going a bit too far. 14 to 11. Ablena trying to keep the rally going. Set serve, Shootman again. Near side, solo block, good dig, Flames, far side. Angling it down, Delucci. Able to find the gap. And we got a timeout on the court. Flames 15, Bruins 11. We'll be back with the UIC Invitational from Flames Athletic Center here on ESPN. UI Health takes pride in serving Chicago. We're in your neighborhoods, providing care closer to home because we're committed to keeping our communities healthy. And that commitment starts with a healthier you. It's more than a prescription or a procedure. It's a healthcare team taking the time to listen. As partners in your health, understanding your needs is the first step in providing the personalized care you deserve. UI Health, changing medicine for good. 
If you're looking to lower your mortgage payment or buy a home, Credit Union One is offering historically low rates on refinance and new home purchases. Right now, you can get pre-approved in one day on a fixed rate mortgage. Rates have never been this low, so now is the time. Don't wait. Conventional and jumbo rates are available. Call or apply online today and be sure to ask about our $400 credit on closing costs. Credit Union One. Better banking for all of us. 15 to 11 as we see that last point. The power from DeLucci. Snap in the wrist. McBride, definite early candidate to be on this all tournament team for her play at the Libro position. Both Libros have really been outstanding, but not much you can do with that if you're McBride. And that's coming at you like a missile. 15 to 11. Flames need 10 to go up 2 to nothing on the visiting Bruins from Belmont. Over the double, set return. Shootman, good placement by Cull. Far side, DeLucci tips it. McBride, good pass, Ablena. DeLucci over the double! Give me two, 16 to 11. After a early deficit in set two and battling back and forth, tied at one point at 11s, Flames have come out firing. Massive dig, back row, that one goes out of bounds. Much needed point for the Bruins. Bruins again coming into today two and one overall. Having lost Indiana State in their last matchup, last Saturday the fourth. Four point deficit now. Back row, good eye by Emilia Sunga to get out of the way. One of the hardest things is to get away when it's coming right at you. Waist high, 17-12, five point deficit. If we look at the numbers so far, kill leaders Floyd, Shootman, and Peterson, the top three. For Belmont, six for Floyd, five. Schutman and two for Peterson. Henderson with six. Oldendorf, five. And DeLucci with four. For the home Flames. Again, we want to remind everybody, stay tuned to ESPN all weekend for your UIC Invitational Volleyball action. Besides today's matchup here at noon Central Standard Time, later on this evening, the Flames will be at, back in action against... Eastern Illinois, 7 o'clock, and then Chicago State will be 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. If we look down the road for the Flames, Northwestern, Loyola, and DePaul will be next weekend, all in Evanston, Illinois. And then to round out the month, IUPUI, Purdue, Fort Wayne, and then three at home with Green Bay, Wright State, and Northern Kentucky to bring us into October. 17-12 is your score. 41-24 overall are your numbers as we see the play. It looks like we're under formal review actually to see if there was contact. Great job by our camera crew. And again, we said the hardest thing is to get out of the way. Ooh, it's hard to tell by that angle, but Joe Gregory with a outstanding camera job to show from that angle. If anything inconclusive, I don't see, even if we were play it short and full time, I don't see necessarily a rotational change. So we'll see what the official ruling is gonna get, be. But again, from my vantage point and watching with you at home, it did not look like it changed, but they are calling a tip. Again, too close to call, but they called it. Belmont gets the much needed point to bring from 17-12 to 16-13. As we were saying before that short break, it is so hard to get out of the way when you're playing back row. Near side, double block, back down, Belmont! Rally time, 16-14. Could that change of point be the change of direction 
for the Bruins in set number two. 16-14, two point deficit. Bruins serve, Peterson. Slap it down, near side still alive. Again, finding the gap. DeLucci aimed, McBride couldn't return. 17-14, three point deficit now for Belmont. Right now what DeLucci's doing is when she sees the double approaching that far side, if they're playing closer to that far side antenna, she's pulling it near side and challenging McBride. If they're playing more near side, she's tipping it over the top and challenging Schutman. Back set, over the double, Ablena all day. Down, out of bounds. Not able to snap the wrist enough was Abelhadi. Bruins back within two, 17-15. Same concept, wanted to challenge. Shower on the far side. Sunga with the return. Side bump to keep the rally going. One attempt over the double. Tipping at it was Zariah Woodard. 17-16, if they tie it up, Flames may need their first time out. Ingram in his fifth season deciding what they want to do. Four in the back. Far side, high return, DeLucci. Pass, back to DeLucci. She goes near side. Bread and butter all day. Belmont able to return. One attempt over the triple. Exactly what we saw Belmont do all day to the Flames. Flames able to return the favor on that one. 18-16 back to that two point lead. That triple was converging. The inside outside help not necessarily there. Pinpoint placement. DeLucci to serve. Set foot kill, wow! That hit the block and kept on going. Bruins only trail by one. Santiago out of Notre Dame College Prep High School. Ablena, no lift called, far side. Santiago over the double. When it's there, it's there. 19-17, Santiago gets that point right back. As we see set on the far side, tip over. They are challenging that back row all day. Possible adjustment going into set three is to bring that back line up a little bit. They know they're gonna go for the triple. Roof, roof, roof. Abel Hadi bringing it down. 2017 Flames. Again, that is something you have to challenge, excuse me, you have to work on is knowing, looks like we are gonna have a quick cleanup of the floor, but if we see that replay, my goodness. Knowing if your coach Ingram, Yanez and the rest of the staff of the Flames and Abahadi, only a freshman, only can build around that. Far side over the double. DeLucci able to keep the rally alive. Back set, double over the top. DeLucci with the tip. Bruins trying to set up their attack from the 10 foot line. Fly like an eagle. 20 to 18, a viper strike from the 10 foot line. Watch this recoil, boom. Two point lead now for the Flames. Substitution of Blaina, coming in. R1, given the go ahead. Decoy, near side. Split the defenders. 
Flames trying again. Beautiful block across the middle. Sydney Willis out of Old Hickory, Tennessee. Beautiful one-on-one -on -one isolation block. One point deficit for the Bruins. Near side, Abelhadi still alive. McBride past 10 foot line. Another kill for the Bruins. Tied up at 20. My goodness, that adjustment we mentioned bringing it up from closer to that, from the back line to the 10 foot line. Boy, oh boy, has Floyd made a difference. Nobody able to get there in time. Bruins have not only come back, they are in the lead. Timeout called on the court. Flames trail by one. We're here at the UIC Invitation on ESPN. Bruins Flames, the first set ended 25 to 12 with an absolute onslaught by UIC. Flames not having to use any of their timeouts in the first set. Belmont, after their second timeout though, late in that first contest, you saw that there was a little bit change of approach that carried them into the second set. Down at one point as well, never gave up changed their approach, started the attack on the 10-foot line. Mistakes for UIC, not as many mistakes for Belmont. Right now, 25 kills for UIC, Belmont up to 21. But if we look at the errors, Belmont only with three in the second set, UIC nine after having none in set number one. Total attacks, 63 to 59. Belmont was in a negative for a hitting percentage in set at, at the conclusion of set number one, they are now up to a 143 clip. Absolutely amazing turn of events here for Belmont. One down, one kill. 21-21. Exactly what you needed coming out of a timeout if you're the Flames of UIC. You need that point. They like to call it the coach's point. Coach Ingram getting that one. Tied at 21. Taylor Floyd set to MVP for Bruins right now. Call serve specialist, left hand. Set, near side, double block, goes far. Are they calling the tip? No tip called. Point goes to Flames. R1 was right there, Johnny on the spot. Call the lefty again from Auburn. Set over the middle, Call keeps it alive. Near side, down! Breakthrough, tool block, bring out the ratchet set. 23-21. Beautiful net camera angle showing. Hit the arms, drop down, wrench, Saw, hammer, whole toolbox for that one. 10 foot line, kill attempt again. Flames alive, far side. Double block, poking around. Near side, tip down, Garrido. Right place, right time, set number two, point. A three to nothing rally coming out of the timeout. What a turn of events. Seems the humidity in the area is really affecting that 15 foot area, that back right quadrant. Having a towel after every game, or after a, a lot of points here in the second set. Call to serve, left hand. Back set, double block. They're calling it alive, they're not calling a lift. Point goes anyway to the Bruins, hits the antenna. Very close call on a lift, Bruins wanted it. They got the point anyway with the hit off the antenna, down by two. Can the Bruins come back, get two in a row to force extras, 24, 22. Shootman serves specialists. 
Good spot, pass, decoy. Over the double, Bruins are learning. Double, down, falls in. Point, kill, flames, victory. 25-22 is how set number two is going to end. A valiant effort by Belmont forcing UIC's hand to call a timeout. We'll take a timeout with them. UIC looking to sweep in three. Can Belmont change the tide? We'll find out on ESPN. Welcome back, one and all, to the UIC Invitational on ESPN. The Rising League is comprised of 12 institutions, and we want to remind everybody that they are committed to safe competition for student athletes, coaches, administrators, and fans, while also helping to ensure and provide support for the health and wellness of over 3,000 student athletes. To learn more, visit horizonleague.com. Tale of two sets for sure as we roll through some of the highlights. Again, Netcam very helpful in this match, seeing how much has been played. Rolling one way or another truly was the difference in set number two. We roll through some of the numbers again. DeLucci leading the pack for UIC with seven. Henderson with six, Garrido with five kills. For the visiting Bruins, eight for Floyd, Schutman with six, and Peterson with two. Wafik with 11 assists so far. For the home Flames, 12 for Mason. For Belmont. Diggs, Ablana, obliterating the numbers so far, 14 digs really has been the catalyst for clear practice style offensive attacks for UIC really putting Belmont on their heels. As we saw in that first set being 25 to 12, second set of course went 25 to 22. Belmont had the lead, but UIC found their way back quickly, efficiently, rolling off three out of the last four and that's how things ended in that second set. McBride, six digs, really playing above and beyond, keeping things alive for Belmont in that second set. 
But of course, Taylor Floyd, not having set her name as much in set number one, but set number two really making a difference. The kill leader, of course, for Belmont in this one. We look ahead on the schedule for the visiting Belmont Bruins. Chicago State, four o'clock central time today. And then they take on Eastern Michigan tomorrow afternoon at noon. And we're back. Thank you for being with us here. Pete Ferrari, Chicago, Illinois. Flames Athletic Center, Bruins trail two sets to nil. And that one goes a bit out of bounds. Point go Flames. Call serve specialist, the lefty. Drops it to Floyd. Back set, high return call. DeLucci, Santiago. Oh, no defense for that one as Santiago, that is veteran leadership. Again, toying with that double block. We've seen a hard pull near side. We've seen soft tip over. Oh, big play, Sydney Willis. We are the call of the wild, two to one. Bruins enter the point column here in set number three. That one goes a bit far. Again, if you are Belmont, you have to limit the errors because UIC will take advantage of that. Ten foot line, stab at it, not able to be there. Floyd again hugs around, making her presence known. Floyd willing the Bruins to stay in this. McBride, 10 foot line. One down, kill. Oldendorf, you shall not pass. Four, two flames. And now the aforementioned Oldendorf Top serve, call to set up the offense for the Flames. McBride stays in play. Shootman. Oh, good play back row, Shootman. Long rally here. Tip over, still alive. Again, Taylor Floyd. Making her presence known, she's even shocked how that one rolled around. A point is a point is a point. Four, three, Flames, lead is one. Back row, Santiago, DeLucci, one hand stab, McBride not able to get there. Talking about DeLucci, she was selected to the all-tournament team in the Red and White Invitational just a few days ago after finishing the tournament with 39 kills, 42 digs, and a team best six aces on the service line. Paola Santiago, also the all-tournament team for the Top Dog Challenge after leading the team with 37 kills, 41 digs, and eight aces. Over the double, the stab works for the Flames. Near side, off the double, Santiago. Far side with the decoy. That one goes out of bounds. McBride able to get out of the way. 5-3, make it 5-4. Belmont staying alive. Straight to Ablena. Lot of congestion at that near antenna. Bruins tied up. 
five, five, your score. Ablena over the middle, high off the double. Good timing. That one stays in. Shoop, 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 bay doop. Six, five. Belmont absolutely coming out firing in set three. 10 foot line, double block down. The answer to the question is nope, 6-6. Six, six. To serve DeLucci. High return, decoy. Can anybody get there? DeLucci can't get there. Point Bruins. This is exactly what we saw in set number two. No retreat, no surrender. Bruins serving Bass. Walk up, send it home. Abdul Hadi ties it at seven. Serve over Ablena. Back set. Knocking it down, Santiago. Quick points for both teams here in set number three. Service error, Ablena. Tied at eight. In to serve, one of the serve specialists, Carly Mason from Morona Forsyth High School, part of the former Illini, Illini Elite Volleyball Club. Rolls off, hit the shoulder, no lift called. Set, near side, high off the double. Back. That one goes a bit too far. Nine, eight, Bruins able to take the lead. And a service error point right back to the Flames. We we're talking about the height discrepancies. UIC actually features one of the largest height discrepancies between its tallest and shortest players Amongst all of the D1 programs, we talked about Salma is six foot 10, but the twins, the Sunga twins, five foot on the dot. Point, Flames, 10-9. It's almost a two, point, two foot difference between the shortest and tallest player on the team. But again, if you play as one cohesive unit, utilize the strengths across the board. Shootman mishandles the return. 11-9 Flames. I'm anxious to see, as I've stated in set one and two, where Harrison decides to use that first time out. Floyd. Santiago off the double, high return Floyd. Near antenna, good return. Santiago gets it knocked right back into her 11-10 Bruins. Santiago went to the well one too many times, didn't get the tool. 11-10 Bruins trail by one here in the third. Top serve. Decoy. That is exactly what they wanted on the last play. Henderson gets it on this one. Tool kill. 12-10, two point lead for the home flames. 
Checking it in is one of the aforementioned five foot tall sophomores out of Fontana, California. Amelia Sunga, one of the serve specialists. Near side, Floyd. McBride, if there's anybody that can keep it alive, she's able to. Back bump, Mason sets up the Flames attack. One, down, kill, Flames. 13-10, three-point lead. You can't allow the Flames, today at least, to be able to set up their offense so efficiently, you know what the result's gonna be. Good eye by Floyd, able to see that one. Shoulder up, get out of the way. 13-11, Bruins only trailing by two. Taylor Floyd up to 10 kills. Back corner, DeLucci. One, down, kill, Oldendorf. Three point lead for the home flames. You gotta feel one more. Bruins may need that timeout. Oldendorf now back to serve the Pride of Lockport Township. Miscommunication there, stabbing at it. Flames set up the attack, decoy, far side, isolation, tool, down, kill, Flames. 15 to 11, timeout on the court, we will take it with them. Flames lead 15 to 11 at the UIC Invitational on ESPN. It's always out there. The horizon. A reminder that our greatest goals are rarely attained. And as soon as you reach one, another emerges. But every day we rise and work harder, dig deeper, ask one more question, take one more shot in relentless pursuit of our horizon. While our UIC campus is quiet, the important work continues. Teaching and learning, caring for patients, discovering treatments and cures, innovation, persevering with determination and grit. The world is changing. The importance of your degree won't. We are the University of Illinois at Chicago for Chicago. Thank you to our students, faculty, staff, doctors, nurses, and all our service providers. Welcome back, 15 to 11, your score, Flames lead Bruins, set three. We want to remind everybody as well, the hashtag 1HL working group, it's comprised of student athletes from all 12 institutions, built on the notion that all those schools and student athletes compete against each other. By working together through a commitment to stewardship and respect, the league can create meaningful and impactful change. We want you to learn more today, horizonleague.com slash 1HL or by searching hashtag 1HL. Belmont gets the coach's point, 15-12. They haven't used that back near corner much. Able to do so there. We were talking about Floyd so much. Senior outside hitting Floyd was the 2021 All-OVC preseason team. She was named to that after earning a second team All-OVC nod in the spring. Flames get that point right back. Four point difference. Flames to serve. Safaila Vahik. Hop serve, 10 foot line, McBride. Back set, over the double, high return. Set, far side, tip over, still alive. Free ball, can the Flames set it up? Far side, DeLucci down, DeLucci kill. It's heating up, 17-12, set three Flames. Just a few points away from the sweep. To serve again is Wafik.
Back set high off the double. 10 foot line. Over the top. Can't do it. Six point lead home flames. Rafik to serve. Back set. Miscommunication there. Four hits on Belmont. 19-12, set three seems to be slipping away here at the Flames Athletic Center. Lafik again. Massive coil spring attack on that serve. Can anybody get there? No. Santiago almost heading into the loop on that one. Nineteen thirteen. Floyd, team leader to serve. Ablena. Far side, off the double, Santiago. All the stabs have worked today for the Flames. Rally still going. Play at the net. Good return, Flames. Ablena sets up Delucci. Challenge McBride, not enough behind it. Are they calling a tip? They are! What a great. Great, great, great set that time by Belmont. We talked about it before. Sliding down is Shower. If anybody ever made the Tom Amansky video for sliding on your knee set, sign her up. 19-14, five point difference. Make it up to 2014 now after another point for the Flames. Is the second timeout coming for Belmont? Delucci to serve. Ten foot line coil for Floyd kept alive. Back set. Can the slide get there in time? It cannot. Point. Flames. 21 to 14. Four points away from busting out the brooms. Serving again the all-powerful Delucci. Coming up Floyd. Return Delucci. Setting up Santiago. That one goes a bit too far. They've gone to the well all day. They're looking for the tip. Flames were calling for the tip. Unclear if we're going to have a review or not. Looks like we are going to have a review. All the players on the court immediately called for the tip. Our one didn't have it, 21-15 is your score. Again, Belmont needs a two for one special to come back in this one and force it to a fourth set. Again, as we have a moment, we want to remind everybody. Oh, here we go for the official replay. For those watching along at home. If we watch the left hand of Shower. Oh boy, it is tough. That is a close call. Again, we look at the rotation. Beautiful camera work for our crew here today. Again, we're waiting to see. I believe it was no tip or did some fingers bend back there. 
It might have touched the left hand just at the very end. Outstanding replay, though. 21-15, 2 nothing. The Flames took set 125-12, set 225-22, and given the point. Yeah, it looked like from that final showing of the replay, one or two of the left fingers of Izzy Shower bent back. The sophomore from Waterton High School, 22-14. Oh boy, the tape ace. Ace is the place, 23 to 14. DeLucci to serve, two points away from the sweep. 10 foot line, Shootman with the kill. We talked about it all day with how the front line has been and net play for the Flames. If you're Shootman, if you're Floyd, you gotta be able to drop it, challenge the top of the fingers to get to that back line. Santiago, pass far side, Shootman. Ricocheted, but then hits the hand of one of the Flames. You don't see that often. As we look in the camera angle, boom, 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 boom. 23-16. Save that one for the highlight reel. Far side, Shootman, Ablena. Tip over, getting the till. Jackie, yow. 24-16, game point. Ablena to serve, to send it home. Set near side, Shootman, not going out easy. 24-17. DeLucci and Floyd tied at 11 kills apiece. Twenty four seventeen, Belmont still with the serve. Game point. One down, ricochets a Blaine all alive. Rough. Sydney Willis. She's been challenged much of the day. Twenty four to eighteen. Belmont. Showing so much heart. McBride, and not able to get there is Floyd. That's gonna be it. That's gonna be all she wrote. 25-18 is how set three is going to end. We're gonna take a quick timeout when we come back post game action right here as the Flames take it in three straight at the UIC Invitational live on ESPN.
Welcome back to the Flames Athletic Center here in Chicago, Illinois, as the UIC Flames take it in three straight against the Bruins of Belmont. We'll go through some post-game highlights in just a moment. We want to remind everybody, however, catch the Horizon League on ESPN3 and ESPN Plus all season long. That's where we are now while staying up to date by visiting horizonleague.com, interacting with Horizon League on social media, or by downloading the Reach the Horizon podcast. We want you to learn more at horizonleague.com. As we talked about, we will be back later this evening for a 7 p.m. Central time tip off against Eastern Michigan. And then the UIC Flames will be back tomorrow at three o'clock for a game against Chicago State right here on ESPN. As we look at some of the final points and kills of the game, Again, Belmont was outmatched in set one, 25 to 12, not really being able to find their footing or an answer. A lot of errors and uh, issues gone along the back line. Belmont, though, able to find themselves in the second set, having a lead with the final five points to go. UIC Flames able to pull that one out 25 to 22 on a very, very late rally. And then here in the third set, evenly matched for much of the first half to two thirds of the match. However, UIC able to pull things out 25 to 18. So we look at some of the final numbers for the day. 75 to 52 was the point differential. 42 to 33 was, po was the kills. Attack errors, 18 for Belmont. UIC did themselves no favors with 14. Total attacks, 103 to 101. Hitting percentage, 272 for UIC. Belmont ended at a 149 clip. 37 to 29 for assists. And service aces, truly a differential Throughout the game, seven to one, seven aces again for UIC. Five service errors for Belmont to four of UIC. Block assists, 12 to eight for UIC. Solo blocks, two to nothing for UIC. Again, the net play was really, really the difference for UIC being able to push Belmont to the limit of what they were gonna do in the back row. Again, as we wrap things up here today, we want you to thank you for being with us at the UIC Invitational on ESPN. We will be back, as we said, at 7 o'clock this evening. Don't go anywhere. We wanted to see you there with us. UIC Invitational on ESPN. <laughs>